<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, back over here at the PlayStation 3, and I'm going to be showing you all something if you have a custom firmware-enabled PlayStation 3, something pretty cool that you can do with PlayStation 3 ISOs. Now, here's an example of something that's going on, right? Let's say I have, I'm going to look, go into my Webman Games, PS3, and I've backed up my copy of Call of Duty 4 on my PC. I do have a Blu-ray drive I can connect to my PC, so I've backed it up, I've sent the ISO over, now check it out. I can go ahead and mount this, but if it loads up here, it does show up, everything looks good. But let's go ahead and tap the X button to boot it up and see what happens. Now what happens if you end up doing it in that exact order of operations, you'll end up getting a message like this saying an error occurred during the start operation 800-117. And that error simply means it's not able to play this game because the contents are encrypted. Now typically what you would need to do is take the disc itself pop it into your PlayStation 3, and then use something such as Webman or even use Multiman to go in there and end up dumping the contents of the game itself, whether it's as a folder format game or as an ISO. Because when you dump the game using the PS3 itself, it ends up decrypting the game on the fly, so you're able to play it with no issue. However, what if you're not able to do that? For example, you have a disk drive that's just not working the best, you have a bad laser on your PS3, you're just not able to use your PS3 to decrypt that game. Well, there's a few ways of doing so on your PC, but in the last few releases of EvilNat, specifically his beta builds, he's actually had a feature that allows you to decrypt a PS3 ISO on the PS3 itself, which would hopefully save you a little bit of effort. Now do keep in mind, you do need a key for this for your specific game, and every game, even depending on regions and such, can have a different key for it. But I'm going to show you all how to do this. Now you will need a few prerequisites. First of all, you are going to need your PlayStation 3 that has already been jailbroken with custom firmware. This guide is not for PS3 HIM users because, at least at the moment of recording this, this is not available on PS3 HIM. But specifically, you are going to need the latest version of the EvoNAT custom firmware. Now, it has been in several versions here, but I'm just saying the latest one because it does help to be on the latest and greatest when it comes to the EvoNAT custom firmware. Plus, if you're on an older custom firmware or even an older older EvoNAT version, you can then update to the latest one and you'll have this functionality. This guide will also be a bit more of an overview because this is going to run on the idea that you're already familiar with navigating a jailbroken custom firmware PS3. So as long as you have the basics down, you should be able to continue on. Either way, let's go ahead and move over to our PC because we are going to need a few things. Now the first thing you're going to need here if you do not have it already is going to be the EvoNAT custom firmware. Now right here I'm going to be linking to the PS3 custom firmware page over on PSX Place. And this is generally a good form and I guess sub form right here where you can look into uh, issues, features, reports for custom firmware. But more importantly, usually at the top pinned here there's going to be a custom firmware download. So you can see here at the time of recording this, the latest one is 4.91.2 EvoNAT custom firmware, in which you can come over here. And from here, you can go through the process of reading up on this, but of course also downloading and upgrading your custom firmware in case you need to do that. I'm not going to be covering that in this video. However, I will have it linked down below in the description where I have a guide showing how to update custom firmware on your PS3. Thankfully, it's pretty simple to do. You just need a USB drive and a few moments of your time. Now, I am going to link here to the redump decryption keys for PS3 disk images page, which all those tools ended up setting up here. And it might seem a little bit daunting here, but this is just an example here. Uh, you can see that for even a single game, there's going to be different versions of it. And you can check this according to the game ID. But one, for example, like 007 Legends, there's different versions for Europe, Russia, and the USA. So depending on your specific version of the game, you are going to need the key for that. Now, we are going to need a key file, not a D key file, a key file. And the downside to this is that they only have the D key files available. However, what you can do is you can download a repository of all of the dot key files and then go through that. So you can come up here, click on dot key, and then save the seven zip that you're going to get somewhere you can easily find it. Now, like I said, if you're not able to back up your disk on your PS3 itself, let's say you want to preserve the drive, you want to use it minimally, or maybe the laser's just getting a little dodgy or the drive just does not work. Here, this is where you can use something such as ImageBurn to back up the disk. So on Windows, you can go ahead, download, and 
install this like any other program. You will, of course, if you're doing this on your PC to back up your game discs, you are going to need a Blu-ray drive to actually read the discs. And finally, we are going to need a way to transfer the ISO over to the console itself. Now, if you want to do it through your network like I'm doing, you could use something such as WinSCP. Otherwise, you could also put your ISO on your USB drive. There's a few ways of doing that, but I'm going to be going through the network here. Now, in order to back up our game disc, like I said, you are going to need a Blu-ray drive, like whether it's a reader or a burner hooked up to your computer, and then you can use Image Burn and open it up and go ahead and pop the PS3 game into it. Now you can go to Create Image File from Disk, give it a few moments to load up here, and as you can see, mine shows up as COD4 underscore MW dot ISO. You can set the read speeds to max, and from here, you can click on this folder, and you can choose wherever you want to save this. Once you have that selected, you can just click on this button right here to begin reading the disc, and you're just going to need to give it a few minutes to rip. It depends on the size of the game, and of course, the speed that you're reading it at here. Now, this one wasn't all too terrible to back up here, but you can actually see it right here. I'll open this up. In my PS3 folder, I've actually already backed it up earlier, just for this video to save a bit of time. However, if you are needing to rip this, you're just going to need to sit here, wait, and once it's done, you can close out of Image Burn. Now for our key itself to extract it, we can go into the 7-zip archive we got and use something such as 7-zip to extract it, in which you can right click this and extract it right here. Go ahead, give it a few moments to extract out. There are a ton of files here, but it shouldn't take too long. And inside of here, you're going to have a red key folder. Now once you go into here, this is where you'll have all your key files, and you're going to have to look for the file specific to your game. So I know mine is going to be Call of Duty 4, which if I scroll down here, check this out, I do know that this one is going to be my key, the one for Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare USA. And this here is where that website will help out, because you could look up your game, such as Call of Duty 4, and when I scroll all the way down here, I'm able to find it, and it's at the very bottom, this Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare USA. The game ID matches what is on my disc and on the cover for my game, so I know this is the one for me. So what you can do to make it easier for yourself is right-click, copy this out, and we're going to put it directly next to our ISO right here. Now, if you've never used WinSCP or another type of FTP program, it's not all too difficult to use. Right here, you'll just need to go up to the New tab, create a new remote tab, and inside of here, go to New Site. We're going to do FTP, no encryption, and we now need the host name for our PS3. Over at the PS3, make sure your console is plugged into your local network. If you have Ethernet, that is going to be the most reliable, but you can go to System Settings, go all the way down to System Information, and right there it should show your local IP address, which is exactly what we can punch in. Once we have that IP address, it's going to be port 21, anonymous login is fine, and if you want to save this, you can. I'm not going to be doing that though, I'm just going to click Login. Give it a few moments and you should see this here. Now since I'm going to transfer this to my internal drive, I'm going to go to dev hdd0 ps3 iso and as you can see right here, I've already transferred the iso before, but we do need to transfer over this key. So if you haven't transferred the iso, do that now and you could also transfer the key by right clicking it and uploading it right here. So it's going to be next to our iso and the ps3 iso directory. Finally, you do need to make sure that they have the same file name. So this is our key file, but what we can do is single click on this so that the file name is going to be accessible. We can now right click and copy, then do the same thing on the ISO itself. Right click, paste, click off of that. So as you can see, they now have the same file name, but this is the ISO and this is the key. Once that's done, we should be all good to go whether this is on your internal drive or on a USB drive. Let's close out of this and navigate over to the PS3. Over at the PS3, if you're using something such as Webman, it would be good to refresh this here. So go into Webman Games, go to Webman Setup, and now go down to Refresh, Webman Games, and XMB. Select that, it's now going to scan for content, and then of course refresh your XMB. Once your XMB refreshes, we now need to mount that game itself. So you can use Multiman, Irisman, or Webman, whichever backup manager you want to use. I'm going to use Webman for this, so I'm going to navigate into Webman Games, PlayStation 3. You can see I have my Call of Duty 4 right there, so I'm going to tap the X button on it. It's going to mount up the ISO. There we go. It is loaded in as before. But this time around, let's go ahead and fire this up. 
And just like that, there we go. As you can see, it was the same ISO as before, except this time around, the only thing I did was I renamed it. We end up adding that key in there, and as you can see, the nice thing is, there was actually originally a feature to decrypt the ISO itself. But now with the way this all works, you just need to provide the ISO, whether it's encrypted or decrypted. But if it is encrypted, you just need a matching key file. And once it's there, you're able to play it just fine. You can see here that this is all working without any issue. So even if I do this, new game, whatever it might be, there we go, we're able to load in without any issue. Again, we were getting an error before, but this time around, no error. So we're in pretty good shape, I would say. Let's actually get in game. So here we go, end up skipping that, and right at the beginning of FNG, perfect. So as you can see, this is still running, but now that we've been able to get that to work, we can go ahead and close out of here. Now as a final but optional step here, and this is going to be completely up to you, you see that this is able to work, and the nice thing is this is on-the-fly decryption, which is pretty awesome to see. However, if you go over to the network settings, go to Custom Firmware Tools, go to Basic Tools, Right down here, you actually have the ability to decrypt the ISO on the PS3 itself. So if you want a completely decrypted ISO, you can go with either the hard drive or the USB option, whichever one you're working with. Although do keep in mind, it does state here it's going to take some time and it's not recommended to cancel it. And it of course also has some heads ups here just about the usage and such. However, if you're perfectly okay with just having the on-the-fly decryption method, which is, again, pretty awesome to see, uh, that will work pretty well for most people, I feel like. Either way, that's about it for this video here. Hopefully this worked out for you all. Hopefully this taught you all something pretty cool with the PS3 and specifically even at custom firmware that's able to do. And hopefully you enjoyed the video itself. If you did, a like would absolutely be appreciated for this. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. But either way, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.